Here's an example of a slider that I drew. I'm going to show you all the pieces that make up this slider and also the best way to compress all of these layers together so that we can create a slider that has minimal file size for the iPad going into Command Fusion's GUI Designer and then also so that it's reusable. So if we need two, five, or 32 different sliders, we can reuse the same graphics within GUI Designer to create as many as we like with minimal file size impact on the iPad. Okay, so if we look at our layers, we have the main slider, which sits against a 50% gray background. I like to draw against that. It gives me a good idea for shadows and those types of things. Okay, you'll notice we have the title, we have the knob, and we have the track parts. And if we look at that, let's open the, each one of these folders. We'll expand the title folder. It's simply text. Let's expand the knob folder. And what I have is a knob by itself that has a red line and a black line. I may want to use that as an indicator when someone touches the slider or the slider is being moved. I may want the black or I just may want it for graphical appeal. I'm not sure. So I just put both of those in there. We may not even use them. Now we have the track parts. And what we have are the range values because that may change. Uh, here we have plus 60 to negative 10. You may want 0 to 100. You never know what you want. This allows me to put in whatever values I want. If I expand that folder, you can see there's simply text values. And I can turn each one of them off independently if I wanted to. Also, we have the indicator lines. And if we expand the indicator lines folder, these are small. I have different sizes. And you can see we have the top group 1 and bottom group, uh, which goes to 14. So if we turn that group off, you'll notice that they disappear in their group order. Now, this allows me to draw each one of the lines independently. Here I have the long line, you'll notice here, and then the little smaller lines. So once I draw that, then I can simply make a duplicate of that and paste them into place and not have to redraw this. And the other nice thing about it, since each group has one long indicator and smaller lines for uh, whatever increments that I like, I can add as many as I want. I have two extra groups down here to show you how I can go beyond that to make a longer slider, or I can shorten the slider and change the values. And it makes it very convenient to make a slider of any range that I like and any size that I like. Now the other thing that I have in here is the actual track parts. Now uh, within the track parts, we just looked at that actually, the range values and the indicator lines, we also have the track. Now the track consists of these pieces. There's the background gray, there is the uh, bevel and emboss, and then the actual indicator line. So each one of those can be set up however you like as well. Now, finally, uh, if I go back to the knob, I want to show you something that we can do. If I select the knob, notice in Photoshop we have the effects that's associated with this layer. Now, right now I have a drop shadow. If I select the drop shadow, I can change within the knob how dark that shadow might be. I can simply grab it as well and just kind of place it where I might want it to be. I can change its distance. I can change its spread and its size and make it look however I like. And I'll show you why this is important in a second. I'll leave it like this and maybe move it up just a tiny bit. Okay. Now these are all the pieces that make up that slider. So if I ever need to make a new slider, I would come back here and I would change all of these elements to whatever uh, I happen to need. And this is simply to show you what you can do with your graphics uh, to purpose them for GUI Designer. So now what I would do is I want to export these into three parts. Um, I want the title, I want the knob, and I want the track parts all to be independent. So the way I would do that is uh, it's actually very easy. I may want this input to be input number one. So I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to add a one and we're done. 
Now, since I have in Photoshop, I have a text file with an effect, the best way to combine that into a flattened layer is to add a blank layer. And I'm going to move that layer below because it will allow me to retain that input one name. I'm going to select both of those layers by holding down the Shift key. Then if I hold on the Option key, which is Alt on the PC, and I come to this submenu here, I will select the Merge Layers item. And notice what this does for me by holding down that Option or Alt key. It allows me to maintain my original layers and yet have a combined layer. Okay, so now what I can do, now that I have this flattened combined layer, you can see that it says that it's been merged here. I'm going to do a select all. And if you go under the select menu, that would be select all right here. I'm going to copy it. And same type of thing, if I go to the edit menu and I say copy, and now I say create a new file, you'll notice that it's untitled. I'm going to call it input one text. Okay, notice the width and the height. It's 153 by 38. And that's important because now I have a file that is the size of that input text. And I'm going to paste now. Hit paste. And there it comes in, just perfectly sized. Now what I don't want is I don't want that background layer. I want it to be translucent. So I can do one of two things. I can turn that background layer off. Or what I like to do is simply throw it away. Now we have a translucent layer. Now what's nice about this, what we're going to do is we're going to export this as a ping file. Ping stands for Portable Network Graphic. And a ping file, uh, what's nice about it is it is a picked file, or a, or a BMP if you can imagine that, that also has an associated mask. And it's an 8-bit mask. And that allows us to have this translucency. So when we import that ping file into uh, GUI Designer, that mask will get applied dynamically, and all we see is a translucent input one, which is exactly what we want. That means we can use that against any background that we want. So I'm going to go in Photoshop under File and say Save for Web and Devices. And when I do that, I'll get this window. I want to make sure that I choose Ping 24. I want Transparency. Notice my image size is 153 by 38, and you'll get a preview here. Let's select Save. And for now, I'll save to the desktop, and it will title it for you. It puts dashes in there, input dash one dash text dot ping. I'll hit Save, and off it goes, and now I have that file as a ping file. Okay, now we can do the same here for the other elements. Let's do this. Let's turn that off. We've already used it. We don't need it. Let's go to the knob. And same for the knob. I'm going to select only the black line. Oh, look, if I leave them all on, it, looks, it actually looks pretty nice. But I do like the red line. So let's do this. We'll select the red line. Hold down the Shift key, knob style. Hold down the Option or Alt key. Merge layers. And now we have the knob by itself with the drop shadow. So let's do this. We want to select all. Once again, so we go to select all. We do a copy. Let's go to new file. We'll call this slider knob 79 by 133. It's perfect fit. We click OK. Now we want to paste. There it is with the drop shadow. And let's get rid of that background layer. Empty it in the trash. And here we have this perfectly sized knob with a drop shadow. Go to File, Save for Web and Devices. And we will save that to the desktop. Click Save. Off it goes, and you're done. I think you get the idea now. And then finally, 
what we have is, let's turn that off now that we don't need it, and I will deselect this image. I'm going to turn the knob off, and let's go to track parts, and for it, it has all of these values. Let's select them all. Hold down the uh, Alt or Option key. Merge layers. And here we have this nice track now. So let's once again select all. Let's copy. Create a new document called Slider Track. One twenty two by five oh four, perfect fit. And now let's paste. Throw away the background and we have this great track now. File, save for web and devices. There it is. Save it. And we'll save to the desktop again. And we're done. So now we have these three pieces here. We have a slider track, we have a slider knob, and we have a input one text. And next, let's import those into GUI Designer.